Reinstalling Windows 10 for HP laptops. All you'll need is your laptop, the laptop's charger, and a USB that's at least 8GB. If you would like to follow our written guide at the same time, or for clickable links we reference, the link to our blog that this video is based off of is in the description. If you find guides like this helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. Part 1. Download what you'll need. Start by downloading Microsoft's free Windows 10 Installation Media Creation Tool. Insert your USB and run the program. Follow the instructions on screen for the program and either change any settings you need or want to change, or leave the recommended defaults as they are. Once the program has finished installing, open your USB and create a new folder called HP Drivers. This folder can be named anything else so long as its name doesn't conflict with any existing files. Next, go to HP's website and download the HP Support Assistant into the folder on the USB. After we've reinstalled Windows, this will help reinstall drivers. Lastly, check to see whether you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your system, either through Task Manager's Performance tab, which can be found by right-clicking the taskbar, or by checking your laptop spec online. If your laptop does have NVIDIA graphics and not just the integrated GPU, go to NVIDIA's website and search for your model of GPU and download the drivers to the folder on your USB. For example, a Quadro T2000 drivers would be found under Quadro, Quadro Series Notebooks, Quadro T2000. Download the Wi-Fi drivers as well as some laptops may not have compatible drivers once Windows is reinstalled, and you'll be unable to connect to the internet without them. Part 2. Back up all your data. When reinstalling Windows, you'll lose any data you had on the boot drive of the system, so it's important that any data you want to keep is backed up beforehand. You can either do this with an external local drive, whether this is an external hard drive, another USB stick, or through a free cloud storage solution. We won't make any recommendations as practicality will change per person. Just ensure that any data you want to keep is safely secure off of your system before continuing. Part 3. Power and BIOS Reset Turn off your laptop plug in your charger, and turn your laptop back on again. If you receive a message stating that your charger is the incorrect wattage, we recommend using a different charger to check if your charger is an adequate wattage. Next, remove the charger from the laptop, and the battery as well if possible. Power on your laptop, and press escape to open the startup menu. From here, either select the BIOS option or press F10. Once in the BIOS, under the main tab, select apply factory defaults and exit. Once you have confirmed and exited the BIOS, allow the system to reboot. If it has rebooted as normal, wait 20 seconds and shut down the system and reinsert the battery. This can help improve the stability of some systems. Please note that depending on your version of BIOS, the settings may be different and require slightly different steps. The unit we're demonstrating on is an EliteBook 745 Gen 4. Part 4. Configuring the BIOS. Before we configure settings in the BIOS, you need to know what to change them to. There are two main options, Legacy and UEFI. As a general rule, Legacy is for older hardware and UEFI is for newer hardware. In some cases, new hardware may only run in UEFI mode, so if Legacy mode doesn't work for installing Windows on your system, try UEFI. Legacy tends to be more stable, so especially with older hardware we recommend using Legacy first if possible, though newer systems may require UEFI, especially if you intend to upgrade to Windows 11. We'll start with Legacy. The important points for all BIOS are to disable Secure Boot, enabling Legacy Boot, and configuring the boot order so your boot drive is on top. Power on your laptop and press escape to open the startup menu. From here, either select the BIOS option or press F10. Start by navigating to Advanced Secure Boot Configuration and choose Configure Legacy Support Enable and Secure Boot Disable. Save changes and exit. Re-enter the BIOS, Advanced Boot Options and disable UEFI boot order. Lastly, configure the Legacy boot order to start with your boot drive, most likely your SSD. Save changes and exit. For UEFI, the settings are to disable Legacy and enable UEFI and Secure Boot. Navigate to Advanced, Secure Boot Configuration, and select Legacy Support Disable and Secure Boot Enable. Next, Advanced, Boot Options, Disable Legacy Boot Order, Save Changes and Exit. Part 5. Install Windows. With your laptop turned off, Insert the Windows installation USB you created. Turn your laptop on, and press F9 repeatedly to open the boot menu. From here, you can select which drive you want to boot from. Select the name of your USB. Once booted into the install software, it should be fairly simple to follow the on-screen instructions to complete the setup. If prompted, select the same version of Windows as previously, whether that's Home or Pro. 
When given the option to select which disk, make sure to erase all partitions of the disk that currently has Windows 10 installed. Then select the empty volume of the disk and select New. Partitions will be created on the boot disk. Once they are, select the unallocated space remaining on the drive and click Next and Windows will begin being installed. Once it's done, your system will restart and you should boot into Windows. If you reboot into the Windows installer again, make sure to remove the USB from the system. Part 6. Setting up Windows. Move on to installing the HP Support Assistant from your USB. When installed, navigate to the Update section. Select any updates available from the list and select Download and Install. If prompted, restart the system as instructed. Open Windows Device Manager by searching for Device Manager in the Windows search bar, or holding the Windows key and pressing X, and then selecting Device Manager from the list. If all devices have drivers, there won't be any categories open. If there are still devices without drivers in Device Manager, go to HP's website and search for your model of laptop, and manually download any remaining drivers. If you check Device Manager and there are no devices missing drivers, then your system has been successfully set up and is ready to use. 